are live at Anaheim Stadium and whether you would expect at this time of year as the Giants come to visit the Los Angeles Rams. Beautiful, beautiful day. Hi, I'm Pat Summerall here with John Madden. And John, the Giants 8 and 0 tied with the 49ers for the best start ever by two NFL teams, the Giants best record ever. Yet they seem Parcells does Bill Parcells the giant coach somewhat apprehensive about playing the 49ers. Why. Well I think he feels real good. I think he enjoys being undefeated. This team has a lot of confidence. It could very well be the best team in the NFL. And if he is apprehensive it's just the fact that he's playing the Rams and he knows that the last two times they played last year. Well the Rams beat him both times. In fact they played three times against Jim Everett and they've never beaten him. Now to me this is a different giant team. This is a better giant team. I think even though it's going to be hot down in the field I think the things they do well they match up a lot better. As I said the 49ers and Giants the only two undefeated teams the Rams a lot of people thought that at the beginning of the year they would be the challengers to the 49ers. Yet they haven't been what people expected. I, I, I wonder what went, went wrong with them. Well you know they got off to a, a bad start then they had the injuries and then they lost their confidence. They picked up some confidence last week against the Houston Oilers and they feel confident today going against the Giants because they also know that the last two times they've played they beat them. Matt Barr set to kick it off. Lattenberry and Gaston Green back deep for the Rams. And as you said John the heat is going to be a factor. Almost 100 degrees down on the field. The Rams think they're used to it. They think the Giants are not. This is Gaston Green with some room. To about the 28 29 yard line. David Whitmore made the stop. Jim Everett will lead the Ram offense and they can move it up front. A veteran and good solid offensive line Panky Newberry Smith Love Slater and Damone Johnson McGee and Cleveland Gary start in the backfield Henry Ellard and Willie Anderson start at wide receiver and look at the temperature hovering over a hundred first and ten Rams their own twenty nine. Cleveland Gary gets the first carry stopped by Eric Dorsey after a gain of six the defense they open with three up front Dorsey Howard and Washington and the strength of the whole outfit the linebackers Cooks and Diossi and Pepper Johnson and Lawrence Taylor both having spectacular years Collins and Walls cornerbacks Guyton and Jackson the two safety and they are also having spectacular years. Buford McGee and Robert Del Pino in the backfield as Everett goes back to throw it. Over the hands of Henry Eller. That's one that could have been for a lot more. You know you can tell that it's hot down there Pat when you see those big guys and the big guys are affected by the heat of course more than the little guys. When guys have towels in their head before they've even played it down you know that they're feeling it. And they have fans on the sideline. Big heavy guys always pack fans with them. Fans in the stands as well as to help out by the benches. Third down and about four. Rams at their own 35 and Everett back to throw it again. Outside complete to Aaron Cox. Stopped by Mark Collins but a Ram first down a gain of seven. You know, in talking to John Robinson yesterday, he was, you know, he's a, a running coach, and you see, he hasn't even played it down yet, and he's, he's sweating down there. But he believes they have to be able to run against the Giants. The last two times that they beat them last year, they rushed for 150 yards and 146. And that is substantial. Yeah, you know, especially against the Giants. I mean, the Giants don't give up a lot of rushing yardage. To Gary. Gary gets out to about the 47. Another pickup of six. And if they can run, they're illustrating it already. Well, you see, they beat them three times in a row. When you go back to 1988, you look, they rushed for 137 yards. 
and then in a regular season game out here 150 yards and then in a division playoffs they rush for 146 yards so Bill Parcells knows one thing he has to do defensively is stop the run Robinson knows that he's looking for about 150 yards of running today if they get that this should be a close contest Gary again into giant territory a gain of three it might be a yard short of the first down stopped by Lawrence Taylor that is a heck of a play by Lawrence Taylor if Lawrence Taylor doesn't make that play from behind Cleveland Gary really has a hole watch Lawrence Taylor the right side of the screen comes all the way across now there is a hole right there you see that hole he was going into and just before he went into it here was number 56 is there anybody else you think in the NFL who could make that play I don't know. I mean, the, the closest would be Charles Haley of the 49ers, but I don't know that anyone else that ever played could make that play. They need a yard. They got it, but there's a flag on the play. Hubert McGee, the ball carrier. The whistle blew before the ball was snapped. Jerry Seaman, the referee. Ball start prior to the snap. Right guard, still third down. If we can see it here, it's a right guard right there, Duval Love, that they call moving before the ball is snapped. You see it right there. He really didn't move forward. He just kind of kind of bunched up a little. Semi-hunker or something like that. Well, I think he was in a hunker and got caught coming out of the hunker. So it brings up third down and six now. Rams back at their own 46 at the moment, and Everett Backpedal. Aaron Cox. Not Ellard was the intended receiver. Incomplete. And the Rams will have to punt. Good pass rush that made Everett get rid of that ball before he wanted to. English back to punt for the Rams, standing at the 30, and Dave Meggett leads the NFC back for the Giants. Rams are bringing both their ends in tight. They're expecting a punt block here. English kick is average. Meggett handles it about the 14. He is not average. He's far above. 40 yard punt, 16 yard return. Bill Sims leads the giant offense. Ever efficient. The offensive line has Moore, Roberts, Oates, Cratch, Riesenberg, and Bavaro at tight end. Otis Anderson and Maurice Carthon with Mark Ingram and Stephen Baker wide. That's the way they'll open it. Intended for Baker incomplete. The Ram defense, often criticized, has Reed, Wright, and Peel up front. Green, Stams, Kelm, and Wilcher, the linebackers. Secondary Gray and Humphrey cornerbacks, Stewart and Newsom in the safety. Second and ten. Hampton and Carthon are the two running backs. Rodney Hampton left side, maybe a yard. Stands and Kelm made the stop. One of the things the Giants are doing is they always change people on every down. We saw Meggett was in on first down. Hampton was in on second down. Meggett comes back in on third down. Of course, O.J. Anderson hasn't been in there yet. But Bill Parcell said last night he was going to play a wide open game, not be conservative. Third down, Sims out of the spread. Has a man wide open. Troy Kyle's just activated last week. He is out of bounds at about the Ram 33. A gain of 34 yards stopped by Anthony Newman. He just came off the practice squad, was activated last week, and 
We were talking to Bill Parcells last night. He says he'll play quite a bit when we use four wide receiver. Just like I said, he said that they were going to open up. And you'll see the Giants here with four wide receivers. You see, and Kyles just comes all the way across right there on the 40 right now. That's a crossing pattern. Everyone was probably looking and saying, 84, who's this guy, Kyle? Who's that? Yeah. yeah. A lot of speed is what Bill Parcells said about him yesterday. When you got a young player that doesn't have a lot of experience, you want speed. This is Hampton. And Hampton, maybe a couple of yards. And right now, for an NFL update, let's send you back to our New York studio and Greg Gumbel. Oh, Pat, what an ending at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City. Kansas City up by six. Derek Thomas just barely misses his eighth sack of the game, and with no time showing, David Craig 26 yards to Paul Scancy, and the extra point was the one that did it. Seattle 17, the Chiefs 16. Pat and John, back to you. Nothing, nothing at Anaheim Stadium. Second and eight. And Sims back to throw it again. No, not much pressure. Hampton with the screen pass. Tripped up after a pickup of perhaps three. Jumbo Elliott. Perhaps, uh, in the words of the coaching staff of the Giants, the best offensive lineman they had, particularly when they run the ball. They thought he would be back this week, but he got hurt Thursday in practice. That's Mike Wilcher, the veteran linebacker of the of the Rams. You know, the Rams have the bookend linebackers, Kevin Green, raising heck on one side, and then Mike Wilcher on the other side. He's a right side linebacker. The Bears continuing with their successful season. New Orleans showing signs of awakening, as are the Vikings. Buffalo sort of hidden as one of the best teams in the league. Miami with their newfound defense. The Colts over New England. Raiders up the road a little piece. Beating Green Bay and Denver and San Diego. Nothing, nothing. Third and five here at Anaheim Stadium. You know, the Raiders haven't lost at home since Art Shell became the head coach. Art has never had a losing game at the Coliseum. That must be a good feeling. I think it'd have to be. I'm proud of my old tackle. Baker was in the backfield and sends overthrow. Lionel Manuel, the intended receiver. Is this John a, a desperation game, you think, for the Rams or? Well, yeah, I mean, I mean, they don't like to say it's a desperation game, but I think if they're going to be a you know a chance at a wild card and that's what they're playing for now they can't afford a heck of a lot more losses maybe maybe one two at the most the rest of the year Matt Barr from 44 yards away plenty of foot and the Giants are on the board three nothing you see Bill Parcells go like that with a fist. That's the thing. When you're on the road, you like to get that first one on the board. Then you can go to the towel and wipe off the sweat. Because I remember my old quarterback, George Blanda, used to always say, get that first one no matter what it is, because it's always the toughest one to get. And you can always build on that. Next Saturday, college football doubleheader action on CBS begins at 12 o'clock Eastern time. In the first of our doubleheader, you'll see the Southwestern Conference leaders, Texas Longhorns, face TCU. Texas beat Houston yesterday. Longhorns go into that game looking for a Cotton Bowl bid. Second part of the doubleheader. Tennessee against Mississippi. That's next Saturday. Here on CBS, that game in Memphis. Mississippi idol yesterday. Notre Dame beat Tennessee 34-29. Yeah, we look down there. The officials have been meeting on the sidelines. They just broke up, and we're talking about the bookend linebackers, Kevin Green. They're talking to Wilcher, who was just hurt. The officials just had some kind of conference meeting down there about the 20-yard line. 
Now they're going over. It looks like their electronic equipment has broken down. And so poor old Matt Barr, he's been waiting there for the football. And they won't give him the football to kick off. You know, he's been a secret kind of surprise for this team, too, Matt Barr. He has been. Look about all the offense and defense of this giant team. But I'll tell you, one of their best things that they do is play special teams. Someone was saying to us yesterday that the big difference between these two teams from a year ago are the special teams. Barr's line drive kickoff fielded by Latin Berry. To his own teammates, Lewis Tillman, down deep for the Giants to make the stop. I guess that wasn't mechanical. You can see that it's a it's a physical thing, and it looks like they're they're going to spray something on it, checking the the back of the the leg or the calf or the top of the Achilles. <laughs> That's the field judge, Don Dorkowski. You know, they could pull things, too, and pull and stretch and that type of thing. So now they're going one official short in this game. McGee and Gary behind uh, Jim Evans. Now it's Cleveland Gary straight ahead up to about the 25, a gain of three. Stopped by Eric Howard and John Washington. Still over there working on the field, Judge. You can see that they, they already got the the tape job on there. That's one thing that these these trainers do. They can get a, a shoe and a sock off and a tape job on quicker than anyone in the world. Second and seven, Gary the lone setback behind Everett. The moon Johnson was the man in motion. Outside to Cleveland Gary, stopped by Martin Collins. Today, that's the thing. You know, you talk about these giant defenses, and they play what we call a soft zone or a two zone, where both corners rotate up and play soft. Now, if you do that, if you play that in pass coverage, then the corners they have to be able to force and support. And Mark Collins, he'd been injured earlier, and he came back, and he is really hitting. Then on the other side, of course, you got the veteran Everson Wall. But if you're going to play that two zone, then when they run to that side, you got to support them. Third and three, they needed. They're close, but I'm not sure. But right now, let's go back to New York again for an NFL update with Greg Gumbel. Well, Pat, not far from where you are, the Los Angeles Raiders have drawn first blood against the Packers. Marcus Allen, five yards in the touchdown. The extra point has the Raiders up on Green Bay. 7-0 first quarter. Pat? All is spotted on the 33-yard line. Back here at Anaheim Stadium, the home of the Rams, it's 3-0 Giants. They're unbeaten. Their record 8-0, along with the 49ers. The Rams are 3-5. Austin Green with some room and some speed. Knocked out of bounds finally by Myron Guyton, but in giant territory after a run of 31 yards. And I just said the giant corners have to tackle. Watch this when Everson Walls doesn't. He gets a little block out there, but watch this. Great move by Gaston Green. Now watch him come up right there. They don't get to tackle out there. They give him a soft corner. Now, the Giants running game, they have had trouble. When they've had trouble, it's been that way, outside on the corners. We saw the Redskins do it to them in Washington a few years, a few weeks back. And they said the first team that did it to them were the Phoenix Cardinals. Everett back to throw. The Holohan complete to the 15. John Robinson said last night, he said, what we're going to do is we're going to feature Pete Holohan. And that's what they do. The Giants treat Holohan like a wide receiver. You know, they call him an H-back. Some teams treat him like a tight end. But the Giants, in their defense, play him like he's a wide receiver. What did they say they call him? Half-H? 
half H. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you, he's a guy who, who really has a feel for this game and has great hands. That's Del Pino on the move, and this is Cleveland Gary. Left side. To about the 12. Pick up the three, stop by reason. See what they're doing? They're taking that running game, and again, they're bouncing it to the outside or taking it to the outside, making Everson Walls tackle. He had help that time from Lawrence Taylor. But I think that's what they want to do is get their running game outside against the corners. Second and seven at the 13. Gary Roll finally gets rid of it and throws it away. Flag on the play. Oh, I don't believe that. They're saying that he's throwing it away, and that's a penalty. Again, the penalty has to be to avoid a sack. The quarterback has the right to throw the ball away. So now the question is, was he throwing it away to avoid the sack? But I don't know that this isn't a tough judgment. He had already avoided the sack anyway. He had gotten past the sack. I don't know. That kind of goes with that in the grasp rule. And if you want to protect the quarterbacks, then you got to let them throw it away, too. I think that was a bad call. I agree. But there was no one else out there with, that was going to sack him. Brings up third and 17, nevertheless, back at the 23 yard line. Everett back to throw it. Over the head of Henry Ellard and incomplete. There's a guy that's had big days against the Giants, Henry Ellard. He averages 25 yards per catch, and really, Henry Ellard is the kind of the zone guy, the short guy, and then, of course, the deep guy that all Giant fans remember is Flipper Anderson. Remember him catching that ball in Giant Stadium oh, just running right out of the house. Through the tunnel. <laughs> there he is, little number 83. Mike Lansford back to try the field goal from 40 yards away. Holahan holding. Sometimes those are the little different things between an undefeated team and a team that's struggling at three and five. You know, the Rams got that bad call, and remember, we're playing a one field judge was down. The field judge did he injured his Achilles tendon. And that's what they were taping up. You see Wiltshire there. He is obviously he's not in. He has a mild concussion. So the Giants would cross in motion and give the ball to O.J. Anderson. Not much there. Maybe two. And now for another NFL update, let's send you back Greg Gumbel. All right. Well, Pat, the Bears have wrapped it up at Chicago. They have intercepted their fourth pass of the day, their 20th of the season. Vesty Jackson picks it off and returns 45 yards with about a minute and a half to play. It's 30 to 17 Bears in the fourth quarter. Pat? At Anaheim Stadium, 3 nothing Giants. Rodney Hampton behind Sims. complete to Dave Meggett. They can do some things with Hampton and Meggett in that backfield or split wide or whatever they choose to do. Well, you know, it's funny that Meggett's only a second-year guy and John Robinson and Rams are saying that there's three guys to beat the Giants. One is Sims, two is Meggett, and three is Lawrence Taylor. 
it's funny that, of course, you expect Sims. He's 35 years old. You know, Taylor, I mean, he's been known in this place for years, but Megan only in his second year. That was Anderson for no gain. Stopped by Larry Kelm. Wiltshire still on the sideline. As John said, a mild concussion. Place taken by Farinier's. Yeah, there's the Ram offensive line and the sideline, and that is really frustrating to have a drive like they just had and come up empty. You know, they had the penalty down there, and they lost some yardage there, and then missing a field goal, that just takes a lot of air out of you. Second and ten. Get it! Side Hampton. And the Ram defense swarm. In a hurry. Frank Stams, the leader. No gain. No That's the thing that the Ram defense is based on. They don't have a big pass rush. They got some some two gappers playing up there, and if they don't get the pressure from Kevin Green on the outside, they don't get a lot of it. What they have to do is let you complete the pass, and everyone run and jump on the guy and not let him gain any more yardage. And Kevin Green, of course, hasn't been having the kind of year this year that he had last year. Third and ten. Intended for Manuel. Daryl Henley. And the coverage for the Rams as you look down at Anaheim Stadium. Sold out again. Henry Eller goes back deep for the Rams and Sean Landetta, the league's number one. Back to punt. Here's a guy who's having a heck of a year, and I think the punter. And the punt coverage goes with great defense. This is another good one. Chases Eller back to the 10 yard line. Reasons down to make the stop. And a reminder that next Sunday is another doubleheader day of NFL action here on CBS. It all begins at 12:30 Eastern with the NFL today and a visit with Mike Ditkin and Dan Reeves both of whom used to be assistants in Dallas both of whom played for the Cowboys former teammates and still close friends we'll see him on Thanksgiving Day or at least Mr. Ditkin and next Sunday we'll be in Denver when the Bears visit two of the league's most successful and intense coaches both back from heart problems both successful He's trying to get a face mask penalty. He jumped up. He, the three things you got to do is one, you have to get over. Two, you have to catch a ball. And the third thing you have to do is help the official. I think he said as a face mask. That just looked like kind of a, a neck deal. I don't think he had a hold of the face mask. First and ten Rams at their own 28 yard line. Giants leading 3 0. Gary. Cleveland Gary was upset because he did have something back there on that cutback. He was starting the left, cutting back in the right. And as he made the last cut, he kind of slipped. But he had a pretty good hole there. And I think he was a little upset that he only made three yards out of this. Watch the hole back here to the right. It's that counter tray. Watch as he cuts back right there. He sees the hole. And he knows that had he not tripped over his own guy, he would have had a first down there. Second and seven. At the end of the first quarter. And that would be the end of the first quarter with the score of the Giants three. The Rams nothing. Looking around the league, John, at the rest of the scores. In the fourth quarter, that game not over. The Bears 30, Atlanta 24. New Orleans, a team that's coming on now, 35 to 7 over Tampa Bay. In the 
Minnesota 17-7 over Detroit. Buffalo 45-14 over the Cardinals. That's the final snow in Buffalo. West Coast debut over the stadium here today. Piloting the blimp for captains John McHugh and Mary Gail Sink. She is the only woman pilot, blimp pilot, in the United States. I think we had that blimp a couple weeks ago in Washington yeah. or something. They must have, I think it takes them like two or three weeks to fly from there to here. If I went by that, if I went by blimp, out of a bus, I'd, I'd miss like two games. Like you do a game and then you miss two and then you do another one. We're beginning in the second quarter with the score the Giants three, the Rams nothing. I think the big thing after the, the first quarter is the fact that the Rams have 58 yards rushing, the Giants only have seven. Goes out of the sideline. Stephen Baker was talking to the coaches upstairs. And down in the field, they're talking to the defensive secondary, talking about the patterns the Giants are trying to run. Sold out Anaheim Stadium at Summerall with John Madden. 3 0, the Giants lead. Los Angeles Rams, second and seven coming up. I think this is a mechanical hold up here, Pat. The uh, referee went over to the sideline and then came back. There's Ron Earhart. He's the offensive coordinator of the uh, Giants who has done a heck of a job of putting this offense together and calling the plays and everything he does. Picked up about six before he stopped by John Washington. That would be about a yard shy of a first down. That's what the Rams have to be. You know, Ernie Zampezi is the offensive coordinator and really a passing guy. Works with Jim Everett. Then they have, you know, Henry Ellard, Flipper Anderson, Aaron Cox, Pete Holdahan, and all that stuff. But to make it all work, to keep it all together, there's Ernie Zampezi on the far right there. You have to have a running game. Talking about a running game, there's a future of a running game. Marcus Dupree just activated for this game. Has played five years. Third down. Could be enough to hold a hand. I'll guarantee you if they throw it to Pete Holohan on third down, it's enough. Pete Holohan is a smart enough guy that in this late 10 years just making first down. He is not going to run a pattern that's going to be short of a first down. He's caught three for 37 yards. First and 10 Rams at their own 42. Giants leading 3 0. Read something, threw it over the head of Willie Anderson. Yeah, when they, the, the Rams are pass protected pretty well. The, that last play, Irv Pankey was out there and he just knocked Taylor to the outside. You see that they're really not getting a big pass rush. Watch Marshall number 70. That's Newberry going against him with help from the center Smith. They keep him in there so that the quarterback, Jim Everett, can step up. Everett, five out of ten. To Gary, hit just as he got to the line of scrimmage, went around for a couple. There's a guy that did that one with Steve Diossi stepping up in the hole. Watch the backside. These two guys here, how they play the backside of a run. Marshall starts to the outside, so therefore Taylor can go inside and get to be the first guy there. Then when Taylor misses it. Marshall is in position to make the tackle. 
But with Taylor taking that hard inside, Leonard Marshall had to work that game where he covers for him to the outside. Third and eight. Derek Faison gets the pass from Everett and gets close to a first down. Now, Faison is a guy with good speed. Watch him. He's number here, 89, the outside guy. He's going to come in underneath Cox. You see, he just starts out, holds the defender there, and then he just runs away from him. He's another one of those young guys with real good speed. Although I think that one was short of the first down. They're going to measure. And you're right. And the fans are booing this one because they already have their punter out there. John Robinson has always already decided not to go for the fourth down in giant territory. So back deep for the Giants, Megan standing at the 10. We welcome those of you who watched Atlanta and Chicago where the final score was Atlanta 24, the Bears 30. Here in Anaheim, the score is the Giants 3 and the Rams nothing. The Rams have to punt. Megan signals spear catch at the 12. Three nothing Giants. Big NFL doubleheader next week. And the game most of you will see early in the day will feature these same New York Giants hosting the Detroit Lions. Barry Sanders puts the run in Detroit's run and shoot offense. He's the third leading rusher in the NFC. That's next week here on CBS. Right now, it's 3-0 at Anaheim Stadium. The Giants have the ball at their own 12. Otis Anderson left side. Hit by Frank Stams after a couple of yards. There's a guy who's having a lot of fun, isn't he, Pat? Is O.J. Anderson. We talked to him last night, and he just has a smile on his face all the time and coming close to gaining 10,000 yards in this league. And he got his imitations of Bill Parcells down, and he could build, beat Bill Parcells in his argument with Phil Sims on Monday night. He's really enjoying playing this game. Second and seven. Sims back. Has Mark Ingram, and that should be enough for Giant first down and more. Out to about the 30-yard line. Here's Mark Ingram. You can see him here. Jerry Gray is number 25. He moves him back, pushes him off, and then Ingram comes underneath. He starts to the outside, push the corner off, and then working out on that side where the corner was. First and ten, the Giants go with two tight ends this time, and Anderson looks for something to his right. Not much there. Frank Stams again. Frank Stams and Larry Calvin is out. The Rams are doing a pretty good job, and one of the things they felt they had to do is a good job against the Giants' running game. And the thing is, you know, the bad thing about that is I don't know that there's any quarterback better on third down with this offense than Phil Simms is right now. Second and seven right now. Simms to throw it. Outside to Anderson. He was looking for somebody to run into, and he found him. <laughs> he was looking for someone to unload on. And the guy that he was going to unload upon went underneath him. And O.J. had his load way up above the two and the four, and the guy gets his load below it. Watch him. See, he gets underneath the thing. He was all ready with that right forearm, right shoulder, and everything to give it to him. And it was Bobby Humphreys just went boom right underneath him. Third and four at the 35. Three nothing Giants second quarter. Sims out of the sprint. This is a place for scat. 
First down, Giants. Stopped by Stewart out of the backfield. Place for And that's Scatter. exactly what Scat is right there. You see what Scat, the back here comes in, then he could go any place he wants to, right or left. He just runs an option. Now, you watch, here he comes. You see, he's just looking. That's Rodney Hampton. He comes right through the middle. Now it's an option. He sees the guy is playing him inside, so boom, he goes to the outside. The Giants will run that play every third down that they have to pass third and five. Either with Hampton or with Megan. This is Hampton. Stopped by Farron Yeas. You know, that's a, that's a great combination they have now. O.J. Anderson in there being able to run. Then you can take out O.J. and you can put in the speed of Megan or the speed of a Rodney Hampton. Then they still have the, the slasher in Lewis Tillman. Second and nine. Fake was to Hampton. Sends deep to Ingram. Ingram out of bounds inside the 25 by Vince Newsom. And that was a great layer pass. Ingram came across. He's going to come across here, and he starts in here, and he's going to come across, but there'll be a layer of defense here and a layer of defense there, and Ingram goes right between them. Look, if we could take the thing and stop it right now, we'll see that here's a layer here, here's a layer here, and here is Ingram. A heck of a catch, too. Anderson left. Hey, you look at a guy down here like he doesn't belong. You see that Stephen Baker? <laughs> Weighs about 145 pounds. Number 85. There, you can't even find him in the huddle. I mean, he, Jerry Seaman, the referee, blocks out 85. He doesn't fill up a chair, does he? <laughs> Oh, but he has become a big play receiver yeah. for this giant team. Second down, seven. Anderson hit the line of scrimmage. Maybe got a yard. Yeah, you know, Stephen Baker was telling us the other night that that he's playing the Giants at Candlestick a couple of years ago, and and he goes in and the. And the, and the guy, the security guy there, the yellow jacket guy says, hey, you can't go in there. He says, I'm a player. And the guy goes, nah, you're not a player. And all the rest of the players went in, and poor old Stephen Baker was sitting outside, and he had to start yelling. Finally, some giant players come out and said, hey, let him in. He really does play for us. Third down and six. Make it in motion. Send sack. something the Rams don't do very often. And that's why they get so excited when they do it. Mike Peel could be one of their good ones. You see him, he's going to come up right from the, the middle of the screen, right up the middle on Phil Sims. And the problem, he's, he's had a dislocated left elbow. You see all that bandage and stuff in there, but he is one of their better pass rushers. He had that problem throughout last year. This is Barr. Stetler holding, and it's good. Flag on the play, however. 6.27 left in the first half. Jerry Seaman, the referee. Penalty marker down. Bar's kick was good. In one of these situations, if it's a five-yard penalty, it wouldn't be a first down. Against the Giants anyway, so they're going to have to kick it again. A field goal from 10 yards more, which would be out of Barr's range. Now I think they're changing the saying it's against the Rams. But if it is a 10-yard penalty, that would be an out of Matt Barr's range. It's a penalty the other way. Illegal hands to the face. Number 99 defense. First down. Oh, that's an automatic first right. down. Right. I'm going to say they need it. 
That was tough because they had fourth and 15 on that play. Boy, that is a tough, tough penalty against the Rams. Tough for John Robinson to accept. First down, Giants, in any case, at the Ram 24. Anderson left. Flag on that play as well as he was knocked out of bounds by Bobby Humphrey. Well, that's a big break for the Giants to, to be able to get that ball back again. Let's see if we can see the penalty. Here's Alvin Wright, right there. And they called it the illegal hit to the head or the face. Holding. You can see it right there. You can see Diossi, the snapper's head, go back. They penalized him 15 yards for it. The Giants had to take three points off the board. And is still hot about that one. Well, Parcells has a little smile on his face, but you know, in all that thing, even though it was an automatic first down, you have to remember the Giants did take the three points off the board. Sims back to throw it. Screen pass out to Megan. Hit by Stans and chased backward by Stans. be something if after the Giants got a penalty now which was their first penalty if the Rams were to hold him here and not get in field goal range then you would go back and you say to Bill Parcells why'd you take the three off the board although I agree that when you get a whole new set of downs in that field position in the first half I would have done the same thing second and 20 coming up that's back at the Rams 34 leading three nothing with five minutes, ten seconds left to play in the first half. Outside to Anderson. Tripped up at about the 26 after a gain of eight by Frank Stams again. Frank Stams has been all over the field for this Ram defense. And that's the one thing that, you know, he's an inside linebacker, and their linemen have to take all the blocks, and then those inside guys move up and down the line, make a tackle. Makes it third and 12 at the 26 of the Giants. Leading 3 nothing. Stams has six tackles on the day. Sims has his man, Troy Kyle open again inside the Ram 10 a gain of 16. I'm sure the Rams still don't know who the heck is this Troy Kyles. This is really something. Again, you see it's a four wide receivers. I say there's nobody better in football at third down out of the shotgun than Phil Sims. Kyles was way up there in the left. Again, a crossing pattern. Young guy, just that's where you can use speed. Just run it right across the field. And Sims saw the whole field and found Kyles for the second time today. First and goal from the nine. Touchdown, Buffalo. I'm not sure if that was a planned play or a or if he just fell into this because it turns out to be a bootleg he fakes to O.J. Anderson then he comes across then you see Bavaro just working right there he just settles down right in front of the goal line and falls into the end zone that wasn't much of a pattern by Mark Bavaro extra point by Barr is good and 
Think back to that penalty. I think Bavaro just saw the zone coverage and stopped. Ten nothing Giants. Here's Mark Bavaro. Watch the effect of motion. Motion goes this way. That gets a rotation here, and then Bavaro just comes straight down the middle. Watch the motion man. He raises a hand. I'm going to motion. Everyone says, okay, okay, okay. The rotation of the secondary, you see it? Now Bavaro, right there, the outside guy, gets bumped, just kind of wanders straight up the field, and Sims hits him. Sims is 12 out of 15. The Giants lead it 10 nothing with 3.33 left to play in the first half. Lattenberry downs it in the end zone. The Rams will take over at the 20. Down 10 nothing. The Giants 10, the Rams nothing. It was Sims to Bavaro that made it 10 nothing. Very hot at the beginning of the game today. Up over or close to 100 degrees. First and 10 Rams at their own 20. 329 left to play in the first half. Everett. Got it to Flipper Anderson. Down at midfield. That was a heck of a throw by Everett. He just hit it right between two defenders there. And I don't know that they touched flip for Anderson now. If the whistle blows, they did. If not, he could have got up. But watch the, the outside defender there. You see Walls is a short guy. Perry Williams a deep guy. And then Myron Guyton, he really gets it in between three of them. Now he catches a ball, goes down. Now I don't know if he was touched yet. I guess they must have blown the whistle, but it didn't look like they ever touched him. That's Cleveland Gary to about the 49, a gain of perhaps a yard. Stopped by Pepper Johnson and Eric Dorsey. Two and a half minutes left to play in the first half. The Giants lead 10 nothing. Those are the guys who really stopped that inside run. Is Steve Diossi there, number 99, and Eric Howard, the nose tackle. Steve Diossi really takes on those guards as well as anyone. And then, of course, you got Eric Howard taken on the center there. Second and nine. Everett. Throw it. Maybe. No. By Greg Jackson. On a safety blitz. Greg Jackson is getting to be a big blitz guy. You know what they're doing is they're bringing Taylor from one side. They bring Lawrence Taylor from the left side. Then they just delay and, and bring Jackson from the other side. You see him? I mean, there. everyone's looking for Taylor where he is. And boom, Greg Jackson comes from the other side. So they'll get the two-minute warning. And the Giants lead it 10-0. Here's Greg Jackson here. Taylor on the other side. Boom, he comes. They always give attention. Where is Lawrence Taylor? Look, the line slides. Everything comes here. They don't see Jackson. Watch what happens when you blitz. Sometimes a guy can be wide open and the quarterback just doesn't have time to get the ball to him because no one blocked the blitzer. Everett. In and out of the hands of Ellard. Incomplete. I was talking to Ernie Zampezi yesterday, Pat, and he told me that the Giants defense, zone defense, gives you smaller cracks than any other zone defense. Look at how they have three or four guys around there, and you have to throw that ball in those seams or cracks of the zone, and he said somehow they just shrink them on you better than anyone. That ball was well thrown. Just slapped away. Knocked out of Everett's hand. Ellard's hand. Just, uh, English punt handled by 12. So the Giants will take over at their own 24-yard line with a minute 43 left first half. 
In our college football doubleheader Saturday, the Texas Longhorns will take on TCU in the first game. And in the second half of the doubleheader, it'll be an SEC matchup between Tennessee and Mississippi. In the Texas game, the Longhorns are going for a Cotton Bowl bid and are led by Peter Goderick. A career high game against Houston last night with 322 passing yards. Next Saturday, here on CBS. I think that outcome shocked a lot of people. Houston had been rolling high. Same screen pass to Megan. Got away from one stop by Stan. Well, what happened is either Megan got too far out or his screen guys, his lineman, William Roberts, didn't get out far enough. Because you got to get on that screen, that back, Megan has to get right behind those linemen. And he got outside of the linemen. Second and three at the 31 for the Giants. Talk going on down there. Please reset the stadium clock to 1:35. Please reset the stadium clock to 1:35. Resetting the stadium clock to 1:35 instead of 1:20. Thing. You know, we talk about when they get in that shotgun and they and they do it very well. That's the one running play they have, that draw play they've been running for years. And the other thing in this situation again is that scat. And scat means the back in the backfield can go anywhere he wants to, and Sims just watch him all the way. He can go in through the line, outside, and then once he goes through, then he reads the defense and then goes away from the defender. Third and two as both teams make multiple substitutions and the Giants just decide to run it and they don't get the first down quite Jerry Gray came up to make the stop again of a yard now the Rams want a timeout because they want to get another shot at this giant defense Forty seconds remain in the first half. The Giants lead it ten nothing. The Giants ten, the Rams nothing. As you look at some of the other scores, Up at the Coliseum, the Raiders leading the Packers. Bears beat Atlanta. Saints over Tampa Bay. Minnesota over Detroit. Buffalo beat Phoenix. Miami continues to play surprisingly good defense. Henley back deep. Miami is the best defense in all the league, and that's one of the things the Giants are second best. Landetta, another good punt. Henley at the 17. as if something was going to happen that didn't happen. Renee Thompson down to make the stop. This is Renee Thompson on that last pass coverage. He's number 21, and it's why he's the best cover guy in the league. They're going to put two on him, and even when he's not good, he's good. Do they bang him, they block him, they hold him, they grab him. He'll miss a tackle. Watch here. He misses. The guy goes by. Watch who's still going to make the tackle. Miss there. Boom, here comes number 21 to make the tackle, Renee Thompson. I think he's not only the best in the game today, but he's the, he's the best cover guy that I've ever seen ever in this I, game. I think I agree with you. Eller to about the 47 and pick up a 15. Durson made the stop. And the Rams take a timeout. They have one left. 
Ten nothing the Giants. 19 seconds left to play in the first half. For Anaheim Stadium, Pat Summerall, John Madden. The Giants eight and zero oh and trying to stay up with the 49ers with their unblemished records. And the Rams desperately needing a win to stay alive. And what now looks like a spot in the wild card race. Now there's a happy guy. I don't know if you know he gets on his things. He has an argument with Sims. He has an argument. You know, with his play. But I think it's all planned. I think he's enjoying this year more than any other year that I know. He seems to be. Everett back to throw it. And complete in the direction of Flipper Anderson. Well, and the fans were yelling there for an interference call, saying that Flipper was bumped when the ball was in the air. The official was right there running with her, and he shook his head. No, no. And they're going to throw it. They have so much confidence in Flipper Anderson. You see, Walls just gets his left elbow in there. That's a streak move. That's a veteran push. You know, you got rookie push, you got middle age push, you got veteran push. Hand caught the pass. Lateral to Buford McGee and was chased out of bounds with eight seconds left, a gain of seven. Eight seconds left in the first half. I haven't seen that play in a long time. Remember, that's the old thing they used to call a hook and ladder. Oh, sure. Yeah. In high school. Yeah, in high school, you'd go out there and it was always a last play of the game type of thing or the last play of the half where you throw it out there. The first guy just runs a, a pattern. And then as he catches it, he just laddles it like an option to the outside guy. I'll tell you who played that one. Greg Jackson really played that one well. He played both the hook and the ladder. Everett going deep. Pass is picked off in the end zone by Everson Wall. Somehow, I don't know why, the ball always seems to wind up in his hands. Well, he's just one of those guys that, number one, has a great feel. Two, he can jump. And three, he has good hands. He can catch the ball. I mean, it finally bump, 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 and he finally got it on the fourth hit. That's the end of the first half with a score. The Giants 10, the Rams nothing. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by today's Chevrolet, who invites you to see why more people are winning with the heartbeat of America. Gallo Sauvignon Blanc. It will change the way you think about Gallo. And by Delta Airlines. We love to fly, and it shows. Back at sold-out Anaheim Stadium, where the Giants lead the Rams 10-0 at the half. Both teams have come back from their halftime instructions, and... We'll be underway with the second half in just a minute. And John, does it fit the pattern of what kind of game you thought it was going to be? Well, I, yeah, I thought it was going to be a little more wide open because the Giants uh, thought that they were going to have to get into a shootout. But with their defense or the Rams shutting themselves out, then the Giants don't have to force anything. So if the Rams were able to open up and really play Ram football the way it was last year, then the Giants would have to open up. But if they continue to play the way they are, then there's no reason for the Giants to do anything differently than they've done. You look at number one there, Mike Lansford. I was talking to him before the game. And there, like someone had told me that his leg was still bothering him. He couldn't, he wasn't getting the kind of distance on the kicks or on his field goals on the kickoffs or the field goals. I said, are you okay? You're sure you're okay? He said, I'm okay, but you always got to have an excuse. Yeah, and he's already missed one field goal in the first half. Hampton. Phil Sims was a 13 out of 16. You can see that line across there is 15 yards. So deep to the left, 0 for 2, deep in the middle, 1 for 1, 0 for 0 to the right. 
Now left, he was six for six, under 15 yards, four for four in the middle, and then to the right, he was two for three. So under 15 yards, he spread it out right, middle, and left, and he was almost perfect in that area. And he goes back to try on first down and throws another screen pass, which is batted up into the air by Fairney. Mike Wilcher is out, and that's why Farinese is playing in his place. Brent Farinese is number 51. He's usually the pass rusher, but he's playing every down now with Wilcher out. He just rushes. They try and get his hands down. His hands do go down, and then, boom, he puts him back up again and knocks down the ball. Usually when the Giants screen, they screen to their left. Ingram in motion. is upset there because he knew that not only was he grabbed from behind no back likes to get grabbed from behind but he thought he was grabbed from behind by the face mask let's watch him going off to the right here now again no running back likes to see a hole like that and then get grabbed from behind but he was right it was Kevin Green he grabbed him with his right hand by the face mask third down at seven from the 31. Sims in the pocket and the ball is knocked away. Kevin Green made the hit that knocked it loose and I think made the recovery. I think Kevin Green did everything bad. The play before it was a face pass. On that play it was a pass rush. It was a hit of Sims and the recovery of the ball. He fired up this morning when we saw him come into the tunnel and we're walking in. Yeah, he was coming in here about 9.30 this morning. Watch him. He goes by Doug Riesenberg. He hits Sims's right arm into motion, knocks the ball up in the air. Then he comes in right there and recovers it. That's what you call a one-man gang on one play. Well, they talk about momentum and momentum changers. That could be one. Cleveland Gary is the deep back. The ball's at the 11. And the handoff is to Gary. Gary to about the three. Stopped by Greg Jackson. A gain of eight. I don't know what they fed that Ram team in there in the locker room at halftime, but, you know, at some point as a coach, you just get fed up and you say, look, you know, we're going down the tubes. Let's just go out and have fun and make something happen. Go flying around that field. The Rams are at the three. Second and two they're from there. They can make a first down without making a touchdown. signaled but there's a penalty marker down and that's in the area of holding where they call offensive holding and we've seen more and more of it on running plays in fact almost twice as many running plays as passing plays are offensive holding personal it's foul face mask number 77 touchdown Call it against Dorsey right there, the face mask. You see Eric Dorsey grab the face mask. It was a touchdown anyway. He still, he not only drags it, but he turns it. That would be hard on the neck. Yeah, that uh, gets the attention of your head and redirects it. Flag on this play. Gary Seaman is talking to 
Kevin Green. Illegal substitution number 91 did not report as an eligible receiver. Five yard penalty. That's Kevin Green. He's made a lot of things happen on this drive, yeah, has he? I thought they made, maybe that was a couple years ago, but I, I thought they made 90 numbers eligible as tight ends. Maybe that was just one year in the preseason. Kevin Green is a linebacker, but I thought the 90s were eligible numbers. And I remember they changed it to that a couple of years ago. So what they're saying is he did not report. He lined up in the backfield on the wing. It's good, nevertheless. And all of a sudden, the game is a lot tighter. It's 10-7, Giants. What had been rather subdued in Anaheim Stadium in the first half has come alive here at the beginning of the second half. The penalty is assessed. And Lansford will kick it off from the 50-yard line. I tell you, it all started with Kevin Green's sack and fumble recovery on Phil Sims. That fired up the defense and the whole team. Then the 15-yard penalty here. This is a fired-up coverage team. Going to be Hampton. And about the 16, stopped by Pat Terrell. Greg Clark. The injured ram. See what happens when you come down there. There's going to be a lot of hits from a lot of different angles. I tell you that that didn't look like a big thing. He was just hitting buckle. He was staggered. That has sort of a strange ring to it, doesn't? It? Strawberry, outfielder, Los Angeles Dodgers. Yeah, and he's in Los Angeles on the side of the New York Giants. Bavaro. Enough for a first down from Sims. 12 yard gain. Mark Bavaro. Yeah, Mark Bavaro has really been, been banged up, and it just seems like every week he just has to gut it out. One of the toughest guys that's ever played this game. And Bill Parcell says he never gives players off practice, and if they can't practice, they can't play. He said Bavaro, he made an exception. He didn't practice him on Thursday, and he does play him on Sunday, but he said that he's the only guy he'll do that with. He did that in training camp as well. First down, Anderson, stopped in the backfield. By right and field. Loss of one. There is a load as a nose tackle, Alvin Wright. One of the most underrated guys. I mean, he's not a, a great pass rusher, but there aren't any great nose tackles that rush the pass for anyway. But he really plays the run well. I mean, he's he's too strong for most centers. He wants 99 there. He'll usually take the center and knock him on running downs into the backfield. Second down. It's cross in motion. Seems to throw it. Anderson. The last lunge came close to getting him a first down. He lost then the ball, but they're going to say he was down. It was funny. We were at practice yesterday, and O.J. Anderson yelled over to the trainer and said, did you bring the steel plate? And I was wondering, steel plate, what's he going to do with a steel plate? Where does he put it? And he puts it in his shoe. And I guess last week, on Monday night, he scored a touchdown in his right foot. He puts a plate, a steel plate, on the bottom so that he can cut off that. Last week, he cut so hard Monday night that he broke or bent the steel plate. Then they had to take a hammer and straighten out the steel plate. Here's, Here's what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah. Watch him when he plants his right foot. Well, see, he gets the hand off and... He is running, and, and with that turf, that, that plant right there is so violent that that bent the steel plate. Now, here's the plate, and here's where he bent the steel plate, right in here. Then they hammer, 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 and get it all straightened out again so it looks like that. Then they put that thing in on the bottom of his right foot. But I think one thing 
we have to remember, John, is that cut was made on artificial turf. Yeah, that's why I'm surprised he wanted to steal plate right. for this turf. Straight ahead is Carthon. This is going to be an interesting spot. It's all in the spot of the officials. Where they put the ball and then how they put it. They can even put that ball. If it lands there, they can put that ball down sideways, you know. I think if I can see it there, I think it's lengthwise. Hey, you look at Jerry Seaman, the referee. He's going to replace Art McNally. I was talking to him before the game. Down on the field in February, he takes over. And he's one of those guys who is really, really dedicated to making sure, perhaps, that the game is officiated as it should be right. officiated. Yeah, you see Karth on there. He hit in there. Then he had a, a very little second effort that I think was just enough to give him the first down. First and ten Giants at their own 39. They lead by three. Sin. To Ingram. Gray was with him, but it was still a completion for 15 yards and another first down. You know, and that's what a big, strong quarterback will do is let you sit in there. We see Ingram. He comes in motion all the way across the field. Then he comes up. He gives a little move. Then he runs it in. That's a heck of a throw by Phil Sims. You know, Stephen Baker hasn't caught a pass yet. This isn't a bad area. From this point on in, is where they like to go to Baker, because this point on in is where you get touchdown. He split wide left. Sims is going to go in that direction, and he looks back the other way and gets the ball again. Another first down, a pickup of 13. Hey, this is the thing. The you know, Rams came out. They came out fired up. They got the interception. They go in and score. Then they get the penalty. And then Phil Sims is methodically taking this team right back. Boom, 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 boom. And all of a sudden, the gun doesn't smoke anymore. Oh, and then the and then the, the crowd is trying to stay up and keep it up, but they're just having trouble doing it. Sims is 17 out of 21. Anderson. Inside the 20 to about the 17. Stopped by Gray Newsom. 15-yard gain, however. That makes a head coach proud, I'll tell you. When you can come off and have a drive like this, mix your run, mix your pass, control the line of scrimmage, have O.J. Anderson bounce to the outside. Look, he's still trying to find out who do I make to move on. Then you just can't find anyone, so you just run right through some stuff said once he gets the ball he looks for his next reaction he looks to the inside linebacker first and ten at the 18 Anderson tripped up by Doug Reed perhaps a loss to one that's the way to stop a running game get penetration well, yeah. Doug Reed is a left end and he just went to me just took a gap hit the gap and he was in the backfield before Anderson could get started. Now that takes Anderson out of the game. That takes Cross out of the game. And that puts their pass offense in on second and long. It will be Hampton and Maurice Carthon behind Sims. Sims to Hampton. Touchdown. Watch it on the clicker. Good moves by Anderson. Poor tackling by the Rams. Look, a block right there. He runs off that block. Then he sees a move right there. He stops. He moves back to the right. Sees another one. Now he's just going to outrun the rest. Bar 
Bears extra point is good, and the lead is back to 10. The Giants 17, the Rams 7. The Giants lead by 10, 17 to 7, 7.46 left third quarter. This is the Fuji blimp. Looks down from overhead. Estimated that almost 700,000 regulation NFL footballs could fit in Fuji blimp. That gets your attention? I challenge that. Murray doesn't make it back to the 20. Stop by Diossi. You know the guy who made a heck of a block on that touchdown is Bob Cratch. Watch him. He's a guard here. Boom. He comes down here, hits a nose tackle. Then he comes up on the linebacker. So he gets he gets a twofer here. Watch. He comes down there. Boom. He gets that block uncalled. Now there's one. Now he's going to come up, and he's going to get the second guy. Boom. There's the other one right there. And that's the lane that he offered for Rodney Hampton. So it was good blocking by Crash, good running by Hampton, and support tackling by the Rams. There's Bob Cratch. He looks like a guard, doesn't he? Only oh, second year, looks like an old guard. That's Gary to the left. Hit by Marshall. Who lost him. Take it down by Pepper Johnson. There's the guy that they expect to have back for the 49er game. That's Carl Banks. Now, a player really can't be on the sideline without doing something. So he got some phony kind of clipboard there. He's writing something down like he's a coach there. But, you know, he's had surgery there on that left wrist. Had a pin in there, and then he had some problem with a the pin. They had to go in again and do a second surgery procedure. And again, they're hoping to have him back in a couple of weeks. And he's got something around his neck, too. That's to hold the wrist up. That's Aaron Cox. Aaron Cox. And out of bounds for first down at about the 32. 16 yard pickup. You know, I think Aaron Cox is in there for Henry Ellard. Ellard, uh, the guy that has given the Giants a lot of trouble, has a hamstring problem. I guess he started to pull or strain a hamstring. So it's Flipper Anderson this time with Cox inside him to the right of Everett. And Del Pino split wide to the left. Flipper had it. Right there. Boy, they had the matchup they wanted. They had him, they had their speed. Flipper Anderson is their fast guy. They get him running up the outside, and they get him in the foot race. He's going there. He has the good speed. He runs right past Mark Collins. A perfect throw by Jim Everett. Oh boy. And then Flipper drops the ball. Quarterbacks, when that happened, will always grab their heads. That ball is there, second and ten. Intended for Aaron Cox as he was rushed by Eric Howard. He couldn't get set. Hey, you know, you only take so many shots at a deep one in a game. You know, you know throwing deep isn't something you do. You know, uh, like running, you don't do it 20, 25 times a game. You get about maybe three or four shots a whole game and then when you get it and you get the coverage you want and the throw you want and you get it there and don't drop it I tell you, or do drop it that really takes a lot out Henry Ellard as you said a minute ago was troubled by a pulled hamstring is back in the game this is Buford McGee not enough for a first picked up nine hit by Mark Collins and Renee Thompson The, the Rams on that came very close, and then, then they had to give up and, uh, and punt in this situation. English on to punt. To the ever-dangerous Dave Meggett. Have a fourth and one here. The fans would like to see him go for it. Of course, they're in a punt. They're not even in a formation where they could fake a punt and run the ball. 
worried about a punt block. They're doing a lot of pointing. And then you know it's not going to be a fake. Delay of game. Offense still brought down. Now what happens, they went from a punt cover to a punt protection thing. And they switched in there, and then when they brought their ends in, their wide receivers, the, 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 the wideouts, they brought them in. Then they had to adjust their blocking. And in that whole procedure, the time ran out on them. So now you don't have to worry about the going for it on fourth down either. No. It looked like they never got comfortable in it, whatever formation they were in. They got comfortable with their assignments. You know, who's going to block whom? English line drive kick. Megan will handle it to 24. He's down at about the 32 by Pat Terrell and Mike McDonald. 77, Giants lead. In the second half of our NFL doubleheader next Sunday, John Madden and I will be in Denver to see the Chicago Bears face the Denver Broncos. Bears are 8 and 1 now and high atop the NFC Central. Thanks to their defense and the likes of Richard Dent, number 95. Chicago leads the league in turnover ratio and they're quietly lurking right behind the 49ers and the Giants as the best in the NFL right now. guys might have an argument. The Giants unbeaten as are the 49ers. Yep. Which really makes for interesting football. You know, you, you think about the Giants and you think about the 49ers and somehow you kind of forget that that Bear team uh, might have something to say about the whole thing. They've been very steady, very much like the Giants, really, in that they've run the ball well. They've played solid defense. Right, and then I think that Harbaugh, who was injured today, has really, you know, come along and matured into his position. And Neil Anderson, I think, is probably the best running back in all of football. Sims to throw. Hit just as he lets it go, intended for cross. Incomplete. Covered by Newman. There's Mike Wilshire. The in the street clothes there. He was. He had a concussion in the first half. They thought maybe he would be able to play again, but then he hasn't. He was on the sideline, and then they just decided that he is out for the rest of the game. Third down and eight, Giants at their own 35. So we're talking about hot weather. Hot weather bothers big guys. You don't see those skinny little guys over there trying to get oxygen. It's always those big, heavy muscle, strong guys. Sims back to throw it. Ball almost deflected, but caught by Baker. That was Stephen Baker's first catch of the day. But it all starts here with the pass protection. And I think the, the, the ball is tipped somewhere. There's more. He's doing a pretty good job. And it looked like the ball was tipped coming out of there. In fact, it could have been Brian Smith, number 96. That was the guy that Moore was blocking. But it's still got to Baker. And enough yards for a first down. 17-7, the Giants lead. 340 left third quarter. Sims to Anderson. Four-yard pickup stopped by Doug Reed. This is the way they beat you, choke you, or whatever it is. They keep the ball away from you. Yeah, that's what Bill Parcells, remember when we talked to him before the game uh, this morning, he was saying is, is shorten the game, shorten the game for the Rams. The way you shorten the game for the Rams is by keeping the ball more yourself and not letting them have a lot of opportunity. Because we saw if they have a lot of opportunity, I mean, they can still be dangerous, but it hasn't worked today thus far. Second down and seven. Intended for Baker. Good defensive play by Bobby Humphrey, who knocked it away. He's the young man who saved the game, saved the game last week against Houston. And he arrived right at the, at the same time the ball did. I think 
You know, as we're talking about, Stephen Baker has kind of become the wide receiver that other teams are looking for now on this team. And on those passing downs, when Sims has to go to a wide receiver, I think Stephen Baker's going to be the guy that's going to get the coverage. Baker comes wide left this time. Sims will operate from the spread formation. The ball intended for Ingram is knocked away, incomplete. Vince Newsom made the hit that caused it. Well, Newsom started to look like he was going to argue about it, and they were giving it to him. There's Baker. I mean, uh, Ingram, he comes in, and boy, did Vince Newsom put one on him. I mean, there's no way that Mark Ingram could have held on to that ball anyway with a hit like that. Sean Landetta averaging 51 and a half yards per kick. Henry Ellard, Daryl Henley back deep for the ring. Landetta gets off another rocket. Good kick. And it takes a giant bounce, and they are there in a hurry. Diasi and Whitmore down it at the three. And uh, there, there is a site that looks like something that uh, was a model that someone would have on their dining room table or something. Then you pull back, and lo and behold, it's Disneyland. Who would have thought? Here we are in football, and there's grass and got boom, you know, guys hitting each other right, right across the street as this. When I was playing with the Giants, we trained at Disneyland one year. Yeah, I lived all these years in California ever since Disneyland was built, and I have never been there once. Some things just don't go together. <laughs> no. Not a place you'd pick for training camp. Pass incomplete. I tell you, Jim Everett is really throwing some pretty good passes yeah. there. That one was thrown to Aaron Cox, and Jim Everett has looked like he is upset with someone because he really has been doing his part. I mean, he's thrown some balls in there to Flipper Anderson. I thought that ball there was very catchable to Aaron Cox. And, the, you know, the, the pass protection has been pretty good today against the Giants. Everett's throwing pretty well, but they just aren't catching or keeping things going. Back in the end zone again is Everett. Outside the Cleveland Gary. Gary out of bounds at about the nine. Picked up six. Everson Walls knocked him out. Now, this is where the Giants are tough. They get you in this position where you have to pass. Then they give you one of their, what they call money packages, which could be penny, nickel, dime, quarter, dollar, all depending on how many defensive backs they use. And if you force the ball, then that's where they pick it off. This one is kind of a run-pass situation, so it's not, it's not a dollar type of thing. Four. This is where he looks for Hawaii. Not this time. It was Ellard. Incomplete. Knocked away by Gary Reason. So they'll have to punt. Yeah, the Giants have all of those packages, they call them. And again, they call them money packages. And they really play them well. Some of them, they take all their linebackers out. Some of them they don't, and then some of them they leave in, and a Gary Reasons, a linebacker, makes a play like that. So English standing back in the end zone, make it at midfield for the Giants. This would be a good time to go for a block. Line drive kick. Megat will have a chance to do something. Somehow he comes right out of it. This is unbelievable. 22-yard return. But look, he should be down there. Where is he already? He's gone. He lost him. Look, they lost him. 
and then boom he comes out of there on the other side of it I mean that is that is something I mean that's a combination of speed quickness balance and even strength strength I think is the key here's Anderson on the left side of the 20 stop by Newsom nine yard gain for Anderson now the Giants are getting their kind of football. It all started with Sean Landetta's punt. You know, he's probably, of uh, this Giant team this year, their punter's probably the most underrated guy. Then the defense stops him. Then they get good field position. They got the thing. They could just keep things going. There's Landetta. He was, he was, what, someone said I'm underrated? Not in my mind. But I think the job that he has done, he, he has been outstanding this year. Well, I think we said before, and someone said to us yesterday, the special teams is really the big difference. And you know, and that's and that's quite a combination of Sean Landetta punting the ball and then Renee Thompson running down underneath to cover it and make the tackle. These people there don't even care. They don't even care about Renee Thompson and Sean Landetta. Second and one. Second and one. They don't care about it over there. Come on, come on, straight ahead. That should be enough for first. You know, when I was coaching, you know, we'd take it so seriously that that always used to drive me crazy. You'd be going to a game, and you'd think this is such a big thing. You know, we're playing a big game. And then you'd see people drive by, you know, with picnic baskets and stuff like that. Too. You know, and say, how could you be doing that? How can you? How can someone be riding on that train there when there's a game going on? <laughs> you're riding to the bus, to the bus to the stadium, and you see those people. How can you do that? None of these guys live in pink castles. I know that. Anderson. Stopped by Stams. Four-yard game. I think that O.J. Anderson is an amazing story. That that he could come back like this and be so strong and so quick and not lose any of that quickness. That's the end of the third quarter with the score: of the Giants 17, the Rams 7. Our coverage will continue after this message from your local station. You're watching the NFL on CBS. Have you, John? I got him. I threw a Coopers and Pollock. In football, ever been to a game like this? Well, that's the way they tailgate here. Look at this champagne. And what bothers me is a thing in there that vegetables and stuff would dip right there. That's called crudité. And when you tailgate at a football game with crudité, there has to be something wrong. <laughs> Second and six. That's Anderson. To about the ten. Stopped by Anthony Newman. In fact, I don't I don't even Newman like that you know the word crudite, but now this is football. Look at this. That's last week. Yeah, last week. Big old fat sausages in there and burgers and stuff like that. You just put something in a bun and do that and have a beer with it. That was Lambeau Field last week. Up in Green Bay. And now we're across from Disney World or Disneyland or what a difference a week makes, huh? The, the Matterhorn, all that stuff. You know, a week ago it was like, I don't know, 30 degrees or yeah. something, Green Bay wind chill here. It's 95, 100 degrees. Anderson hammers inside the five to about the three. Mostly on his own. He is amazing. Well, he is. You know, he's always been amazing to me, a guy that big. You know, he's a big, thick guy, big arms, big legs, big shoulders, who also has speed. I mean, he is the size of fullbacks, but he's always run like a halfback. Now, as he gets older, he's going to running like a fullback. Well, we were talking to him yesterday. I asked him what he had, what he thought he lost, had lost, and he said speed's the only thing. Just speed into 40. Right. Again, Otis. Flag on the play as he almost got in. 
When he first came out, it looked as if he was going to throw the ball. And he was mad at you saying he lost speed. He was going to show you he could still get around the corner with speed. I'll tell you, Bill Parcells was just thinking that would have been the one that put the icing on the cake. Then he's going to get this penalty. See that number 75? His last name is Pointer, Aaron Pointer. He's the brother of the Pointer sisters. And he's right in on this call. 79. Number 79. Does he sing? No, uh, uh, no, no, he does that. Their, their father is a preacher from Oakland. Aaron is an official. And, of course, the Pointer Holding. sisters. Defense, penalty decline, touchdown. Holding on the defense, touchdown. From three yards away for O.J. Anderson. So they got that one straightened out. Now the Giants fans are coming out. O.J. Anderson is in the backfield, straight there like an eye back deep. He looked for a minute, like you said, right there, like he was going to pull up to pass it. And now look at this. He outruns a bunch of Rams to that flag. Well, that pylon it is there. Bar for the extra point. That makes it 24 to 7. Giants. They just sort of choke you, don't they? To summarize what's happened, the Giants 90 yards on the ground, uh, on the ground, the Rams 75. Sims another solid, not spectacular, but but good day, 18 out of 25. Everett 12 of 24. Anderson, 18 carries, 60 yards. And again, John, they just sort of they sort of smother you, don't they? Well, they do. They're like surgeons, and they do it from every angle. It's not just the offense or the running. It's the defense, it's the special teams, it's a kicking, it's they get you from every angle. Bars kick off deep. And down by Latin Berry. They'll start from the 20. 13-19 left to play. The Giants 24, the Rams 7. See, and this is the type of situations that the Rams have been in way too much this year, is they get behind, and they're not a good team at playing uphill. And then their defense has to, and then they try and press, and things happen to them. Then their offense goes in. Now they need a lot of scores quickly. And this is when they get the pickoffs and the interceptions and the turnovers and those types of things. So the things the Rams are doing poorly are the things the Giants are doing well. Never. Outside the box. A gain of seven. Yeah, we talked earlier how important when the Rams beat them, the Rams have beaten them three in a row, for how much they rush for. And you could see each game, it was around 150 yards. Today, they only had 75. But I think in those three years, too, their defense was a lot better than it is now. And in this situation now, when they're behind 24-7, they can't waste time trying to run the ball. Everett has his pass picked off by Gary Reason. Was intended for Holohan. Yep, that's exactly how they beat you. They get ahead like this, then they make you force the ball, then you force it, then they pick it off. They have taken everything out of Jim Everett. I'll tell you, there, Bill Belichick is the defensive coordinator of this Giants. And uh, there is a guy that is an outstanding coach. But the things that they do and the way they set things up, I think, is extraordinary. First and ten at the Rams 40. Anderson, ready again for a couple. Stopped by Alvin Wright, a gain of three. You know, as a head coach, you can't go hide. You have to stay there. Yep. You have to clap. You have to say, come on, let's get it back. When you're playing one of the best teams in football, it's tough. What a tough year for John Robinson. 
over the years with this Ram team. He's done an outstanding job, but this year they just never got off the starting mark. Second and seven. Sims hit by Kevin Green. Third sack. Nobody blocked him. Sims didn't have a chance on that one. This this is a rude awakening. Watch Sims. It's going to be a bootleg. So he backs out. Now he fakes. Now he turns. Look at the first thing he sees is number 91 coming unblocked. So he just went down. That's what makes Sims a veteran quarterback. Looked like he tried to take him on with a left arm straight arm and Green just body slammed him. That makes it third and 12. Sims, I don't believe, has thrown an interception since the first game of the season. Another reason for their success. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by Isuzu for feature styling and price. There's no comparison. Federal Express for documents, packages, and freight worldwide. Absolutely, positively the best in the business. And by Dr. Pepper. Dr. Pepper is just what the doctor ordered. Back at Anaheim Stadium, Pat Summerall with John Madden. I stand corrected. Phil Sims threw an interception last week against the Colts. That was his first since the first game of the regular season. Screen pass, Maggot. Five yard gain, stopped by Maggot, was stopped by Vince Newsom. And you know, we watched Megan here. The first thing, remember, he got out there and he got beyond his screen when he ran it before. I watch here. Now he's looking at the defense, looking right and left, trying to figure out where they're going to be when he gets the screen. He knows he's going to his left. So he starts out, fakes. Now he goes out there. Now he wants to find, right now he wants to find his offensive lineman. He got Roberts's block right there, and that's the one that broke him for the four or five yards he got. So Landetta in to putt it. Henry Ellard and Daryl Henley back deep. Landetta will try to put this one just about straight up in the air. I think they're trying to take a penalty first. I think they were trying to take too much time so that they could get the ball five yards back. He doesn't want it. It's tougher to punt at an angle when you're this close to the goal line. The Rams will, should just turn down it. I sure. would just turn the penalty down, but they didn't. They're taking it. They fell for the move. See, now that's exactly what Sean Landetta wanted there. Now, now he can angle it to the sideline or, or kick it inside the tent. Tried to angle. It does a pretty good job. Boy, you're right. That five yards helped him. Wow. 40-yard punt. If war breaks out in the Middle East, the Pentagon has a $12 billion baby that can shoot down any attacking helicopter. That sounds good, doesn't it? But it doesn't work. $12 billion, and it doesn't work. That shocking story tonight on CBS, followed by a murder, she wrote. And then the CBS Sunday movie, Fatal Attraction. Rams will take over at their own two-yard line. The Giants leading 24 to 7 with 10 and a half minutes left to play. Everett out of the end zone. Holahan. A completion, maybe. Now let's go back to New York for an update. Pat in Los Angeles. Don Mikowski on the run, on the button to Perry Kemp, 28 yards and a touchdown. The extra point gives the pack a 10-point lead against the Raiders in the fourth quarter. Pat. At Anaheim Stadium, the Giants up 24-7, 10-18 left to play. And the Rams deep in their own territory. Pat. 
pass to Holohan was incomplete. Everett again back into the end zone. Out to Aaron Cox. Stopped by Perry Williams. I think they're going out with no huddle, but watch the pressure that he gets. Lawrence Taylor coming from the outside, straight up the middle. Marshall then being in the outside. Both of them hitting Everett just as he threw that ball. First and ten at the 18. Everett going deep. Collins intended for Cox. Collins the defender. Aaron Cox just batted it away to keep Collins from the interception. Yeah, I think that was just a shot. I think they just wanted to take a shot to Aaron Cox. Again, it was good coverage, so Cox just became the defender and just knocked the ball out of bounds. What the heck was that? What did Eric Dorsey just do? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Talking about what Slater did to him. Yeah. That was Buford McGee with the ball on second down, picked up three. Bring up a third down and about seven. Greg Jackson made the stop, and again the Rams go without huddling. This is where the Giants put in seven defensive backs. Enough for a first down. This is where they put Walls back at safety and Williams over at cornerback. That's the thing that Walls gives him. I mean, he can give him a, a corner. In fact, he's become the starting corner. Perry Williams, number 23, down there in the bottom of the screen, used to be the starting corner. And they can put Williams and Walls in there together. McGee stopped by Marshall. They got a five and a flag on the play. San Diego is a surprising team that's Aren't got they? to make it a little comeback here. All of a sudden, they've got the Chargers, a running back that almost no one ever heard of, named Barber, Marion Barber, who didn't even play regularly Offside, in college. Number 56 defense, still first down. And he's up among the league leaders. when the defensive teams have fun when you're ahead 24 to 7 the other team has to force and throw and you can just start banging them around and, and knocking their helmets sideways Again. I tell you that one knocked the sinuses out I mean that was a hit sinuses out. that was a hit Outside to McGee. McGee to about the 45, a gain of 10, stopped by Jackson and Durson. There's a guy we talked about, you know, that has really become a dominant force in this league. And, you know, the, the thing that impresses me about him is you just look at his body. He is not a little guy. I mean, he's kind of short, but he is a powerful man. Everett to McGee again. Again, hit by Duerson, a gain of seven. I mean, the Giants are really having fun. I mean, even in these situations, they're hitting, you know, they're cracking, and they're enjoying it. Lawrence Taylor said this is the closest Giant team he's ever played on. By Eric Howard. Everett is down. Second sack. And you can just see it. I mean, you can see it when you go and you watch a practice. You can see it when you watch him play other people. Here's Lawrence Taylor. His his work is done. This has been a hot day out there for him, taking on these two big tackles, Irv Panky and Jackie Slater. So he's out, and now we see McGrew in there. Larry McGrew, he was one of a Parcells pickup who played for Parcells when he was a linebacker coach with New England Patriots. Very gifted athlete. 
Everett Holahan, who's hit by walls. Boy, they are knocking the heck out of poor old Pete Holahan. <laughs> Wherever he goes, there's a bunch of them, and they're cracking him up alongside the head. Well, he, he, he got up a couple times looking out that ear hole. That ear there, that hole that's in the ears, that was up over his eyes. Fourth and nine for the Rams from their own 47. And no punting team. and they just knock things loose. Hey, it all starts with a rush in the quarterback. They have two defensive linemen in there, two linebackers putting a pressure. Pepper Johnson breaking free up the middle and just hitting Everett as he throws it. Then watch the hit on the other end. I mean, they're getting you on both ends of that deal. So the Giants will take over leading 24-7. In the second half of our doubleheader next week, the 49ers will host Tampa Bay. Joe Montana has carried the load all season long as San Francisco attempts to win an unprecedented third straight Super Bowl. Joe's on a record pace for pass yardage as well. And he is something. First and 10 Giants, Tillman. For four, Fairnays. There's a OJ Anderson. He's out of the game now, still holding a ball. There's protege in there, Tillman, who just carried the ball. They call him his pup. They say that Lewis Tillman is OJ Anderson's pup. That he just follows him around everywhere he goes, sits by his side, does all these. And if you're going to follow some run around and kind of do what they do, O.J. Anderson's not a bad guy to do it with. You'll do a lot of laughing and a lot of smiling. Second down. Tillman to about the 41. The pickup of two. Stop by right. You know, I wonder, we talked about Marcus Dupree as we look at that Ram bench and he was just activated for today's game. I don't think they would put him in in a real tough situation, but I think this is the kind of situation that they might put him in. And he looks like he's he's warming up to go in there. See, the last time he played in the USFL, you know, he hasn't played in five years. Got up to 270 pounds, decided he wanted to play football again. Got down to about 225, looks in great shape. But again, remember, hasn't played in five years. Sims to Tillman. Hit by Kelm. And it'll bring up a fourth down. So maybe we will see Marcus Dupree. Well, you know, you think of Marcus Dupree, they say that Walter Payton, you know, is from Mississippi down there, had a lot of influence on Dupree coming back. I watched Lewis Tillman. Mm -hmm. Ryan, he's from Jackson State, and he he's the guy that broke all Walter Payton's right. record. So we have a connection here with, you know, O.J. Anderson being the kind of the, you know, working with Tillman, and then Tillman, you know, breaking Payton's records, and then Payton being from Jackson and Dupree having an effect on him. So that winds through a number of things. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Henley is back deep to the Rams. Landetta. To punt it. Henry Ellard also back at about the 10. 24 7. The Giants lead it with 4.53 left to play. The penalty. Sean Landetta just did the same thing. So again, he picked up that five yards. It gives him five more yards of angle. Three reasons and Renee Thompson were down there and again 
Landetta gets it done. He is on some kind of roll, and here comes Marcus Dupree. Looks like he was coming in, but I guess he's not. He looked like he was getting warmed up, and they didn't uh, they didn't put him in. But when he does, and if he does come in again, it'll be the, his first action in five years. It looked like he was all ready to run in there and start it, and someone said, hey, not so fast, Marcus, not yet. We don't want you in there having to come off the goal line. It's the third time this half that the Rams have started from their own three-yard line. The intended hole ahead, intercepted by Reasons, his second. He got the deflection, and the Giants will take over at their opponent's 15-yard line. I think they've gone to that well of Pete Holohan one too many times, if not more. It's a second interception for reasons, and that giant defense is just banging Holohan around like a pinball machine. So with 4.33 left to play, it's 24-7 Giants. And your giant on the play as they lead the Rams 24 to 7 and let's go back and look and see who it is. Well look it's a, it, it's right there at the right in the middle of the screen we see Holohan coming in and there's three of them hitting there. It was Guyton and Walls that hit and I think it's Myron Guyton that is down. As you can see him, there was a collision of the two giant defenders. It is Guyton. And the receiver. Right now for an NFL update, let's send you once again back to New York and Greg Gumbel. Well, Pat, at Soldier Field in Chicago this afternoon, the defensive assault on the Atlanta Falcons was led by fast-talking Lemuel Stinson. Chris Miller was picked off four times, twice by Stinson, as the Bears up their record to 8-1 with a 30-24 win over the Falcons. Let's take it back to Pat and John in Anaheim. So the Bears improve their record. And they quietly remain in a little bit of the background as one of the better teams. Along with the 49ers and the Giants. Newsom made the stop on Tillman. He got to the five. Look at this. This is how you take off tape. You wonder how you get it off. You just sit and just rotate your wrist. Then you have some guy pull. And then you don't have to stand there and do it all by yourself. <laughs> the guy pulling that was Steve Valencia. He was kind of a, a stretching coach of the Giants. It is not paid by the Giants, but it's paid by the players. It's like he stretches tape. <laughs> Along with people. I like that. That's a good move. You just kind of sit there and say that some guy pull your tape off. Tillman again. Tillman about to here. about the one and a half. Stopped by Newsom, a gain of four. I think they're still checking Guyton. Uh, looks like the doctor's checking his parts there. Do you have it there? Or does it feel like anything in there? <laughs> looks like he just is a little woozy, though. I mean, he's still trying to get his focus back. He's trying to get those, those eyes working. I know where I am. Yeah. I always used to be taught anytime someone say how many fingers, you'd always say two. Every doctor in the world that ever did that would put two fingers up in front of you. It's Kevin Green. This one thing John Robinson always does when one of his players is injured like this. In this case, Green, he always goes out himself. And his reasons is uh, very logical. He just says, you got to let him know somebody cares. Yeah, and I think that's why, I mean, John Robinson has always been a, a player's coach. And I think that, you know, there's no one that these losses hurt worse than him. And I think that he knows it and the, and the players know it. It's one of those things that they haven't done any finger pointing here. I mean, it's a, a bad situation for him, win-loss wise, but they're all in it together. <laughs> Giving him smelling salts too, so it looked like he just got a little woozy. Got knocked a little woozy. Yeah. 
three twenty six left to play the Giants leading the Rams twenty four seven they say that Meyer and Guyton our information that he just got the wind knocked out of it. Look at Lawrence Taylor he's, he, he looks like he's bored over there. Carl Banks is saying well I'll be back in a few weeks. And Tillman is trying to get a touchdown here. He is working very hard to get a score. First and goal at the one. Roussan back there with Tillman. Stams stopped him for no gain. Leonard Marshall. The guy next to him, number 73, John Washington, has really been playing well for this giant team. He doesn't get much mention, you know, but he really he started in Marshall's place, and he's been a real solid player at that right defensive end. And you don't, you're right, you don't hear much about him. Oh, because he plays right next to Lawrence Taylor. That will make you a solid player, too, where you have Lawrence Taylor on one side of you and Pepper Johnson on the other side. Second down at the one. That's Tillman again. Touchdown. Touchdown. Yep, he works for it. You say he's your pup. You're going to go out there and take care of your puppies. That's the way to do it. Lewis Tillman really wanted that one. Brian Williams is playing now at, at center for Bart Oates. And Tillman just got right in there behind Williams. Bar for the extra point. Which is good. 31 to 7. And again, let's send you back to New York for an NFL update. Greg Gumbel. All right, Pat, earlier today at the Meadowlands, the Miami Dolphins kept pace with the Buffalo Bills. Dan Marino threw for 192 yards and that touchdown and the number one defense in the NFL held the Jets to 154 yards of total offense. Miami, 17 to 3 winners. Back to Pat. Pat Summerall with John Madden back at Anaheim Stadium. The Giants 31, the Rams 7. 2-11 left to play. Bill Parcells uh, in an involved conversation with Lawrence Taylor. Looks like a counseling session. I think that what happens, these guys like Lawrence Taylor become victims of their own success. They're so successful that offenses like the Rams just say, look, I know one thing. Lawrence Taylor is not going to block us, not going to beat us. So you do anything you can to block him. Then a coach has to say, hey, look, don't let that frustrate you. It's going to happen. Lewis Tillman was still celebrating that first touchdown. Bars kick off to Latin Berry. Out of bounds at about the 21. Game return of 12 hit by Greg Jackson. Chuck Long is going to be the Ram quarterback. And Marcus Dupree. Now they're finally letting him go in now. You know, the easiest thing to do for a new player is the running game. The most difficult thing is a passing game because of the blitz pickups and all that stuff. But when you have been away for five years, you know, everything is different to you. I think a lot of people, John, don't don't realize that you have to get used to being hit. Yeah, the other thing, you have to get used to the speed of this game. There's nothing you can practice that goes at the speed this game goes at. That's Marcus Dupree. And that is the two-minute warning. He stopped by Mike Fox. 31-7, Giants lead with two minutes to play. Marcus Dupree, 1983, when he was a freshman at Oklahoma in the Fiesta Bowl. When he ran away from and over just about everybody. But 
again, he hasn't played, as John Madden said a minute ago. In five years, he hadn't been hit. You know, and the amazing thing, that was his freshman year, and then the sophomore year, he only played about half the year and left Oklahoma. That's Dupree. To about the 30. Pick up of seven, stopped by George Bethune. It looks like he still knows the mind can still tell him what to do. I mean, he's a young guy, but again, just hasn't played in five years. But the body just doesn't make those quick cuts the way we just saw him do when he was a freshman at Oklahoma. But the Rams are just hoping that it'll come. Well, he certainly is assuming his knee is sound. He certainly got all the two. Long gives again to Dupree. He's got a ramp first down. Well, he's a good gamble. You know, if you're going to gamble on someone, a guy that had that kind of talent is someone good to gamble on. I mean, he has a great body. I mean, look at those legs and big arms and strong. I mean, the guy is a strong guy, and he knows one thing. He, he doesn't have the moves. He doesn't have the quickness he's going to have. But he wants to just get in there, get some hits, play a little, and don't fumble. You don't want anyone to ever think, a running back, that you're a fumbler. 40 seconds remain with the Giants at 31 7. That's Dupree again. Broke one tackle, picked up four yards. I'll tell you, the Giants have they put another pelt on their belt. I mean, they're sure, they're sure on their way to something pretty darn good. Parcells saying earlier today, I didn't know if I came to Los Angeles to Anaheim too soon or came too late, but whatever he did, it was the right choice. Coming up next, the NFL Today postgame show. Greg Gumbel and Terry Bradshaw will have all the scores and highlights. Once again, the final score here at Anaheim Stadium was the Giants 31, the Rams 7. And you've been watching CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League.